This is Ask Todd on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. If you have an existing estate plan or are in the market for one, Todd Lutzke is here to answer your questions and help you plan for a later life. Ask Todd is presented by Cushing & Dolan, serving Massachusetts and New England for more than 35 years, helping families with estate and tax planning, Medicaid planning, and probate law. Visit CushingDolan.com. Now, here's Todd Lutzke. As promised, we're joined now by Mr. Todd Lutsky from the law firm of Cushing and Dolan. The reason why we call the segment Ask Todd is because it is your opportunity to ask Mr. Lutsky questions about your estate plan. It's that simple. The studio line here is 888-205-2263. That number again is 888-205-2263. So if you've got an existing estate plan and want to ask Todd a question about it, that's the number to call to talk to him right now. If you don't have an estate plan, but just have an estate planning question that you want to ask Todd about, that's the question you call as well. And, well, no, really those are the two reasons why you would call, not just to chat with us. We're, it's not what we do. But, again, that number is 888-205-2263. So if you've got an estate planning-related question, get calling so you can get in line to speak to Todd. Mr. Lutsky, how are you? I am never better than you. Doing well. I, w- I was reminiscing yesterday about uh, my childhood, actually, and how my, my dad used to put me in tires and roll me down a hill. Oh, yeah. You're not allowed to do that today. Th- those were good years. <laughs> yes, they were. <laughs> Todd, let's talk a little bit about IRA beneficiaries. Historically, not even historically, the last 15, 20 years, yeah. when someone comes in and says, hey, how do I title my beneficiaries on an IRA in order to make it mesh with my estate plan, what what kind of guidance would you give them prior to the last year or so? I'm 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 going to take you back even further than that. Prior, oh, good. We can go back as far as you want, and even even still today, a large, or I shouldn't say a large, oftentimes more generally than not, you still might tell them that the best primary beneficiary of an IRA is your spouse, right? That's still a good option right it's not now it's no longer the only option i think that's what you're driving at uh you know uh when you when you talk about this chuck but it there's some other options that's still a very good option for a lot of people and especially if you're doing a revocable trust plan for your estate plan that's still going to be the option surviving spouse number one then your contingent beneficiary again Survive if you have a revocable trust estate plan, still going to be the case. Will either be your kids if you have them, or the revocable trust when you pass the contingent beneficiary, not the primary. And the reason I say or in that case is because if your revocable trust plan is dealing with protecting the assets when you die that are in there from creditors of the children, future divorces or just bad money situation, bad decision-making, drugs, who knows, then having the IRA pay to the trust instead of paying directly to the child can also serve to protect that IRA from those kinds of problems and creditors of the child. So, I think that's the option of putting it, you know, in the trust. So that arrangement still exists. The difference comes when you have an irrevocable trust and a testamentary trust and you want to protect assets from the nursing home. We'll learn this whole month how an irrevocable trust might offer you some some different options. Talking with Todd Lutsky from the law firm of Cushing and Dolan. If you've got a question that you want to ask Todd related to estate planning, this is your chance to do it right now on the air. The studio line is 888-205-2263, and we call the segment Ask Todd because it's your chance to ask Todd your questions. One more time, that number is 888-205-2263. If you have an estate planning-related question that you'd like to ask Mr. Lutsky, that is the number to call. We're going to take a quick break here, but when we come back, it's right to your calls with Todd Lutsky, so make sure you get in line, 888-205-2263. 
Ask Todd with Todd Lutsky every Wednesday at 1030, only here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. You're listening to Ask Todd with Todd Lutsky on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Talking with Todd Lutsky from the law firm of Cushing and Dolan. Again, if you have a question for Todd about your estate plan or lack thereof, the studio line to talk to him right now is 888-205-2263. That's 888-205-2263. Let's go first to Chuck in the Metro West. Chuck, you are on with Mr. Lutsky. What's your question for him? Well, good morning. Great show. Thank you for taking the call. I appreciate it. Um, Quick question for Mr. Lutsky about car ownership. Uh, my father, uh, as he's spending down towards uh, the mass health uh, guideline of $2,000, I've been told that he's allowed to own a car, mm-hmm. and not a Lamborghini per se, but a vehicle. And what happens with that ownership, and then what would happen with that ownership upon death? So it is interesting when you're applying for mass health, they do have financial limits, and I believe that's what Chuck's talking about here. So in this case, it's a single person, assuming he is single at this point, whether it's divorced, uh, widowed, or what have you, um, if there's no spouse, then he's allowed to have a maximum of $2,000 of assets from a financial standpoint. However, one thing they don't count is a car. Now, you're allowed one car, and they do technically say one car regardless of value. Okay, now, don't get hung up on that. He's right. I wouldn't run out and buy, you know, like a Lamborghini. But, you know, you're allowed to have one nice car as long as the car is used for that person's, you know, benefit. you got to run somewhere for the client, for your parent. you got to go pick something up. you got to drive them to a, you know, a place. She, they're allowed to have one car. So that will not be countable in determining his Medicaid eligibility. So good news. And then just to make it simpler, if you're going to get that car, Maybe put two names on the title. Like if, if, again, there's no spouse and maybe you're the child who's supposed to get the car, you know, put both names on the, on the title to the car. That way when one dies, it's an easy trip to the Registry of Motor Vehicles to transfer the title to the surviving joint owner. And it would avoid probate and everything else. So I think that's probably the easy answer for you on that front. And I just hope that if there are other assets, Chuck, that your family has, I always just throw this out to everybody. I would not recommend applying for Medicaid on your own because all the last minute techniques, the nursing home's not going to help you find. That's what the elder law attorney would do. So that's just my little two cents for you on that front. But folks, another two cent item for you, which is probably worth more than two cents, is IRAs and how to deal with them. This is the guide we're giving away this month. It's a new guide. Why name your estate an IRA beneficiary? Well, Everybody's got an IRA or most people have an IRA as part of their estate plan. And, you know, darn it, it is the hardest asset to plan for. How do we protect it from the nursing home? How can we reduce estate taxes with it? Can't put it in a trust while we're living. Maybe it makes sense to put it in the trust when we die. You know, is there, uh, how do we use a testamentary trust if we're trying to protect it from a nursing home? Is there a way to do that? This guide now, with the SECURE Act, many people don't like it. The SECURE Act isn't the greatest thing. It kind of causes money to come out quicker to beneficiaries than it used to. But it did offer us a planning opportunity. So learn how to use an IRA to reduce estate taxes, protect it immediately from the nursing home without a five-year waiting period, have no adverse income tax consequence, and make it available to your spouse as well, so there's accessibility. Get the guide 866 848 5699 or legalexchangeshow.com. You can download it there. Again, how does an IRA fit into your estate plan? 866 848 5699 or legalexchangeshow.com. And you know, there was a caller that I think got disconnected. When you're on your cell phone, that happens. So if you're still listening, we did get the question. I do want to answer it for you because I think it's it's one that resonates, quite frankly, with a lot of people. So in this case, the person is a resident of Mass but has property in Florida. Not uncommon. And there's a mortgage 
on the property in Florida. And I think the question related to what happens to the mortgage when you die. Well, I certainly want to address that. I also see a lot of other questions that this person might not have been thinking, but we need to address. So, you know, first and foremost, when you have property out of state, be mindful. One good thing about it is if you're a mass resident and you own property out of state, that property cannot be taxed in Massachusetts for estate tax purposes. And that's, that's helpful because that's probably increasing the value of this person's estate or your estate, if you're listening. So back it out for mass purposes. And why that's so important is not only has property values gone up all over the place, but definitely in mass, definitely in Florida. But more importantly, if it's not included, it can reduce the value of your Massachusetts estate tax or your Massachusetts estate value. And with the new estate tax law that we now know has passed and is going to be retroactive back to January 1, 2023 deaths, it has increased the exemption from $1 million to $2 million. So if you were teetering on that $2 million exemption and you say, oh, wait a minute, I got a $300,000 property in Florida, back it on out. If you back it out, now that pulls you under that $2 million number and likely you won't even need to file a Massachusetts estate tax return, wipe your brow, more and more people can now stay in Massachusetts. They don't have to move. So very good news on that front. Back to your question though, what else is the issue? Well, I worry about the mortgage. Yeah, I'm going to get to it. But what about probate, right? If I own property in another state and I haven't done any estate planning, then I can have a probate problem, not only in mass, but then I'm going to have to file an ancillary probate in Florida. If you thought probate was bad, try probating in multiple states. Talk about doubling your pleasure, right? That is something you don't want to deal with if you don't have to. So do an estate plan overall, even though it's not taxable in mass, don't get confused. You still need to transfer that property, the, the Florida property and the mass property, and put it into your uh, trust that you're doing whether it be a revocable or an irrevocable trust, you still need to plan for it, even though it's not taxed in mass. Lastly, the mortgage. Well, yeah, mortgages exist, and you have to understand, when you have a mortgage and you transfer that property into a revocable trust, I'll come to the irrevocable trust in a minute, but when you transfer it to a revocable trust, you really don't have to notify the bank because you're still really considered the owner. It's a revocable trust. It's really yours, and it's not going to trigger the due on sale clause. However, when you die, which I know is part of the question, yeah, when you die, the bank is going to want to call that note. It's going to trigger that due on sale clause saying, hey, the person I loaned this money to no longer is living. Therefore, I want to get paid in full. And you have to go to the bank and either renegotiate the note, which of course you know today they're going to want to do because rates are so high, so they're going to want to get a new higher rate, right? Or you're going to have to pay off the note one way or another. So be mindful of that. One last comment, when you transfer that, in, uh, that property in Florida or any encumbered property to an irrevocable trust, we generally would reserve a life estate to prevent the uh, due on sale clause from being triggered. If you keep that life estate or this right to live there, then they're not going to trigger the due on sale clause. So there you go, folks. That's it for today. But call and get the guide 866-848-5699 or LegalExchangeShow.com and learn how to use your IRA in your estate plan. Mr. Lutsky, thank you so much for joining us today. Always a pleasure. The views expressed in this segment are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Armstrong Advisory does not provide any legal or tax advice. Please consult with your legal or tax advisor on such matters. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. This has been Ask Todd on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Ask Todd with Todd Lutsky has been presented by Cushing and Dolan, serving Massachusetts and New England for more than 30 years, helping families with estate and tax planning, Medicaid planning, and probate law. Call 800-393-4001 or visit CushingDolan.com. 
www.spousesgeneralcreditunion.com. Spouses generally serve as the beneficiary to your IRA or life insurance policy, but naming your estate the beneficiary has quite a few benefits. Your goal is to protect your assets from probate and the nursing home. And by naming your estate as a beneficiary, you can avoid the probate process, lessen the chance of creating any income tax issues on your RMDs, and enjoy enhanced estate tax reduction. Call Cushing and Dolan right now at 866-848-5699 and ask for their brand new guide called Why Name Your Estate an IRA Beneficiary. Learn about these benefits and others and provide peace of mind for you and your family during your retirement years. That number again is 866-848-5699. Or you can request the guide online by visiting our website at LegalExchangeShow.com. That's LegalExchangeShow.com. 866-848-5699. 